Well, it's Maundy Thursday of Passion Week. You may be wondering, what is that word that I just said, Maundy? It's M-A-U-N-D-Y. It comes from a Latin word for commandment. For this is the night that Jesus gave a new commandment to his disciples. You see, the events of this day, Thursday of Passion Week, are covered in great detail by all four gospel writers. Uh, Matthew chapter 26, Mark 14, Luke 22, John 14 through 17, an incredible amount of detail, especially that when you consider that the events of Thursday of Passion Week are all begun at sundown. So what was it that Jesus was doing at sundown on Thursday of Passion Week today. Well, he gathered his disciples at sundown for the observance of the Jewish Passover, just like they had done every year. The Jewish Passover meal was a ceremony that all good Jews observed. It was a look back several centuries earlier to a night in Egypt when God saved the firstborn of every home from that tenth and awful plague, if he found the blood of a sacrificed lamb applied to the doorposts of that home, Jesus would take that Passover meal and infuse it with brand new meaning. But before he did, you may also recall that this is the occasion, this Passover gathering, where Jesus would wash his disciples' feet. Of course, Peter raised an objection to that. Jesus used that as a wonderful teaching opportunity for his disciples. And then Jesus named his betrayer and said to Judas, what you must do, do quickly. Then Jesus took the bread said, from now on, this bread which is broken is my body which is broken for you. And this cup is my blood which is shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And at the end of the Lord's Supper, Jesus predicted that Peter would deny him three times before that night was over. Of course, Peter objected vigorously, said, I would die before I would ever deny you, Jesus. But we know, and we'll learn tomorrow, that Judas, pardon me, Peter did exactly what Jesus predicted he would do with three painful and shameful denials. Well, for most people, uh, their thinking about Thursday night of Passion Week uh, begins and ends with the Last Supper. But did you know there was still much to happen that night? For example, uh, when Jesus and his disciples left that upper room and they went out uh, to a, a secluded place, Jesus began to give his disciples important teaching designed to prepare them for his crucifixion and his departure back to heaven. For example, John chapter 14, Jesus taught his disciples that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father but by him. John chapter 14, Jesus gives that incredibly important teaching concerning the Holy Spirit. He says, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send another comforter to be with you and in you. We know in John chapter 15, there was the teaching of the vine and the branches. Uh, John chapter 16, Jesus teaching his disciples about his going and his coming again. John chapter 17, Jesus' great high priestly prayer of intercession for you and for me. And at the end of all of that teaching and that praying, Jesus went on further into the Garden of Gethsemane where he began to spend some private time in prayer with his heavenly Father. You may recall that Jesus prayed to his Father, Father, if there be any other way, 
let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Shortly thereafter, Judas showed up with an armed group of soldiers, temple officials ready to place Jesus under arrest. You know that the sign of betrayal that Judas used to, to show to that mob who they were to arrest was a kiss upon Jesus' cheek. When Jesus was placed under arrest by those Jewish authorities, he was subjected to two nighttime trials in violation of Jewish law. First, Jesus was taken to the home of Annas. Annas was the retired high priest of Israel. And then from there, Jesus was taken to the home of Caiaphas, the current high priest of Israel. Why was Jesus put on trial by those Jewish authorities? Why did they conduct trials in the dark of night? What charge could they possibly bring against the sinless one? Well, under Jewish law, the sin of blasphemy was a serious crime. In fact, the sin and the crime of blasphemy was so serious under Jewish law that it was considered a capital offense. But what did any of that have to do with Jesus? Well, Jesus claimed to be the Messiah of Israel. Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. Jesus claimed to be the Savior of the world. It's blasphemy to claim that you are God. Unless, of course, you are. And what does John chapter 1, verse 1 and 14 say? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And He became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten, of the Father. But those Jews didn't believe Jesus' claim to be God, to be Messiah, or to be Savior, and they put him on trial for the crime of blasphemy, and they would ultimately sentence him to death. We'll talk more about that tomorrow, Friday, when we talk about Jesus' Roman trials before uh, Herod and Pilate. But here's what I want you to think about today. Maundy Thursday, the Last Supper, the institution of the Lord's Supper. We gather every Maundy Thursday. Every year at Graceway, we gather on the Thursday before Good Friday, and we celebrate the Lord's Supper together commemorating that night so long ago that Jesus and his disciples did likewise. And we enjoy a dramatized reenactment, powerful, beautiful reenactment of the Last Supper every Maundy Thursday. I'm sad, aren't you? that we won't gather in the church house tonight. I'm sad that we won't be taking the Lord's Supper together tonight, but I do want to invite you to share with me by uh, means of video uh, tonight at seven o'clock. Uh, we're going to replay for you uh, a, a video presentation of a Lord's Supper reenactment brought to us by our, our Graceway Drama Ministry from just a couple of years ago. So maybe have your family gathered uh, and be ready to watch tonight at seven o'clock. We'll watch the reenactment of the Lord's Supper, just as we do every year. I hope that'll be a blessing to you. And thank you for watching. Thank you for being with me today as we've shared a few thoughts together about the Thursday of Passion Week. God bless you.